Pastor Cozy. We had such a great time last weekend with you and your families at the O Kids Family Worship Gathering. It was so fun to sing together, watch the so-and-so show, have some candy. If you are bummed that you missed it, don't worry. We're having another one next month in November on November 14th. So don't worry. It's going to happen again. So last week, we talked about how being honest with God about how we're really feeling helps us feel closer to him. It's another way that we can show integrity when we are honest with how we feel. So when we don't show integrity, we lose people's trust. Like if I were to say there's a raffle at the end of this video, and then there was no raffle at the end of this video, Next week, when I say, there's a raffle at the end of the video, how are you going to feel? You're not going to trust me. You don't actually think that there's going to be a raffle because I've lost your trust. So today we are going to learn about someone who was dishonest and how that had a lot of consequences. But before we do, we are going to spend some time worshiping with Miss Carrie and remembering our core truths. Today, I declare that I am known and loved by God. Jesus is my friend. I am a unique part of God's story. My true identity is in Christ. I am fully alive in the Spirit. Amen. Well, I love saying our core truths together each and every week and reminding myself and my friends of who God says that we are. Well, listen to these words from Psalm 99, verse 3. It says, Let them praise his great and wonderful name, for he is holy. Do you know that God actually asks us to praise him? We don't sing songs just because it's for fun. It is. We sing and we use our bodies. But as we do that, we're reminded of who God is and who we are, his creation that he loves so deeply. Let's sing together and praise God for who he is today. Praise 
much fun. In fact, there's something so special that happens when we get to sing together. Being together helps remind me, it helps remind Miss Cozy, it helps remind you that we don't have to be alone as we get to know God more, but we get to do it together in a community. And the same is true for our verse of the month. As we connect with others, we can be reminded that walking in integrity is the better way. Let's say our verse of the month together now. Whoever walks with integrity walks securely, but whoever takes the crooked path will be found out. Proverbs 10, 9. Well, thanks Lainey and Tessa. Living with integrity is really hard, but even in the most challenging times, God is there with us where we need him most to give us courage and to help make decisions that are best for us. Let's sing one more song about how God can make us brave.
with you. Would you pray with us right now? And God, we are just so grateful that you make us brave, that you give us courage to do the things that are really challenging in our life. God, we thank you that your love is so deep for us. God, that you never give us anything that we can't handle, but you are there right next to us, walking right alongside us. And God, we ask for you today that you would help us be truthful, that you would help us be honest, that you would help us live with integrity and live to be the best version of ourselves. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Well, before we get to our video, let's sing happy birthday to our friends that have birthdays this week. Hello friends, it's me, Graham, and I am a hero! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, okay, I'm I'm not a real hero, but I'm pretending to be one. It's fun to be a hero because heroes have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And heroes, above everything else, are truthful. Of course, it's also fun to pretend to be the villain. Now you will know the power of the Bucket. For I, Buckethead, am your second cousin once removed. No, that's impossible! We look nothing alike! Would I lie to you? Uh, yeah, probably. You're right, I probably would. Ah, uh, 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 the good thing about pretending to be the bad guy is that I can stop pretending anytime I want. But as you'll see in today's story, when you cheat and lie in real life, it's a little harder to take your mask off. It's really hard to breathe in here. I'll see you all back here soon. <laughs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. Naaman was the commander of the army of Aram, one of Israel's greatest enemies. Forward, march! Though Naaman was a wealthy man, he had one problem that no doctor could solve. He had a terrible skin disease. Oh, ah, make it go away. Then Naaman heard news of a prophet in Israel, Elisha, who might be able to help. But instead of going straight to Elijah, Naaman took rich gifts to the king of Israel, along with a letter from the king of his own land explaining how important he was. The king of Israel frowned as he read the letter from his enemy, the king of Aram. I am sending my servant Naaman to you with this letter. I want you to heal him of his skin disease. What? N no! I I I'm not God. Your king is trying to pick a fight with me. But I, I just no, want- No, this thing, not this thing. La, 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 la. The king of Israel made such a fuss that Elijah heard the news and sent a messenger. It was probably his trusted servant, Gehazi. I am a good guy. <laughs> Trust me. Gehazi took Elisha's message to the king. Elisha says, tell the man to come to me. Gehazi raced back home to help Elisha prepare for the important visitor. And sure enough, the king of Israel sent Naaman straight to their doorstep. <laughs> Gehazi peeked out the window. Look how low the chariot is riding. What's in the back? Embroidered robes and bags of something? Gehazi. Hurry up, you gotta look good for this guy. I'll, I'll get you your best robe. Nope. You're not wearing the robe? I'm not going out. 
not going out. No, you are. But my robe? What's wrong with your robe? It's old. It's not even a decent name brand like Mechilzadek or Queen Jezebel. Elisha sent his servant out the door with a message for Naaman. Are you the prophet? Uh, no. But l- l- let me just say that is one excellent chariot. I-, I see you got the golden hubcap. Where's Elisha? <sighs> he says, go, wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed. You will be pure and clean again. Oh, I thought Elisha would come out himself. I know, right? Look, can't he just say some words and wave his hand and, you know, make me better? That's what I was thinking, too. Uh, And the Jordan River? I mean, it's full of muck and tadpoles and... Forget it. (laughs) Naaman tore off, angry. But his servants convinced him to follow Elisha's instructions. Naaman dipped seven times in the murky Jordan River. And when he rose from the water on his seventh time... What? His skin was perfectly clean. He was healed. Unbelievable. Naaman raced back to Elisha's home. This time, the prophet came outside along with Gehazi. Naaman marveled at his unmarked arms and hands. Now I know that there is no God anywhere except in Israel. Please take a gift from me. Gehazi inched closer to the chariot. He could see the richly colored robes hanging over the bags of gold and silver. Is that a genuine Mikilzadek robe? Uh Uh-huh. The real deal. Just have your servants unload around back and I'll... Nope. I serve the Lord. You can be sure that he lives. And you can be just as sure that I won't accept a gift from you. What? Please, I'm begging you. He's begging you, Elisha. But Elisha still refused to take a single coin from Naaman and send him away in peace. Elisha went back inside, leaving Gehazi speechless on the doorstep. What? No, seriously? Gehazi could still see the dust kicked up by the horse's hooves. Elisha should have taken something. If he didn't want it, he could have just given it to me. With that... Gehazi took off running down the road. His arms pumped and his sandals flapped as he crested the hill and came up alongside the chariot. Naaman pulled it to a halt. Is everything all right? It's fine. Fine. (sighs) My uh, master sent me to say that uh, 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 two young prophets have come to visit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, Please give them 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothes. Oh, of course. Take twice as much. Naaman's servants carried the heavy bags of silver and clothing back up the road. But as they approached Elisha's house... Hey, thanks. (laughs) I got it from here. Straining beneath the weight of his heavy load, Gehazi snuck inside and stashed the clothing and silver in his room. Then he hurried back out and strolled through the front door. (laughs) <laughs> Can't whistle. Elisha studied him with sharp eyes. Where have you been? Oh, me? I didn't go anywhere. Didn't my spirit go with you? I know Naaman greeted you. I know you took money and clothes. I was just... Being nice to the horses, making their load lighter. You and your family after you will have Naaman's skin disease. But th- then I can't wear my new robes. Sure enough, Gehazi's skin was soon covered with sores, just like Naaman's was. Gehazi's lie had won him some new clothes, but it had cost him Elisha's trust and a full and healthy life. Elisha's servant Gehazi told some lies, didn't he? He lied to himself, saying he needed more stuff than he already had. He lied to Naaman to get the stuff. Then he lied to Elisha about all of it. Maybe Gehazi wasn't a bad guy, but would you be able to trust somebody like that? Never! What if someone lied to you? What if they said they were going to keep a secret, but they let it slip out? Or if they said they'd do one thing, but then did something else instead? 
Do you still trust them? Oh no! It's harder to trust people after they've let you down, right? Correct! It works the same way when we're the ones who tell the lie or don't do what we say we'll do. It can make us come across as the villain. So here's the one very important thing to remember. When you're not truthful, you lose trust. When you are truthful, you're the hero! And if you need even more evidence that being truthful is the way to go, look to Jesus. He always did exactly what he said he would do. He can be trusted no matter what. That's what I want to be. What do you say, Buckethead? Will you turn from your villainous ways? Do I get to keep the bucket? Sure. It's a deal! Great! Go be heroes, everyone. Bye! Hey, Buckethead, how do you feel about tacos? When we're dishonest in our own lives, there are consequences for us, too. So if you have a journal, go and grab it or grab a piece of paper, and I want you to draw or write about the question, who do you trust and why? And then maybe think about, am I trustworthy? Should someone trust me? Do I show enough integrity that someone should trust me? So you guys, I really try and be super honest and have lots of integrity so that you trust me because we talk about really important things here. We talk about God, that's like the most important thing and how much he loves you. So I said at the beginning of the video that we are going to have a raffle. And so to stay honest and to keep our trust, we are going to do our raffle right now. Here we go, who's it gonna be? Cassidy Beard! Miss Cassidy, if you are watching this video, you have to reach out to us. So have your mom text me or email me at cozy at oceanhills.org and say, hey, Cassidy was watching the video and saw she won the raffle and I will send you your prize. Okay, so this week in your reflection pack, we have a super fun, actually very challenging word search. So I would be excited to see you guys finish this. And we have our devotionals for the week. We also have the so-and-so coming at you on Wednesday that you can watch with your families. And then we have third grade life group on Sunday, October 18th. And then fourth graders, you guys are next week, October 25th. We hope to see you guys there. Bye.